Hey everyone, and welcome to part two of the breeding guide, where we will be going through the entire process for breeding a competitive Pokemon. This video assumes that you've seen part one, where we talked about breeding high IV Pokemon completely from scratch, so if you haven't seen that, please go back and watch that first, as we're not really going to be talking about it very much. In this video, we will be talking about passing down the correct nature, passing down any egg moves that we need, finalizing our moveset, satisfying any particular evolution requirements, and EV training. By bringing all of this together, we will be able to breed competitively viable Pokemon. As you know, I spend a lot of time researching and editing these videos to give you the best possible learning conditions without wasting too much of your time. If you do like these videos, please consider supporting me by liking my videos and also subscribing to the channel. If you want to be even more generous, consider subscribing to my Patreon for some exclusive benefits, which include the ability to request a battle-ready Pokemon, which I'll breed for you myself. I also stream over on Twitch, where I spent this past weekend hatching eggs and doing research for this video. Links are all in the description. Cerebi and Pokemon Showdown are two great websites that I always use when I'm planning a particular Pokemon to breed. Before I start breeding, I will plan out the moveset, the nature, the ability, and the EV spread of the Pokemon I like by using these two websites. I will also write down specific notes for how the Pokemon learns its moves, which ability I'm looking for during the evolving process, and if I need to trade someone for a TM, and I encourage you all to do the same. Pokemon Showdown will actually let you import or export text data, to build up the entire Pokemon and what I will do is take this and I will put it into Google Sheets like I've done here and then I will just add any notes next to each section if I need them. So for example with the Scarchomp the abilities are kept throughout the evolutions. I will learn Dragon Claw at level 42. The other three moves that I want are all learned through TMs. Another example I wanted to show you is that sometimes you learn moves through different means and one of these is actually through evolution. The other is through the move reminder. So I like to make very specific notes so that when I'm going through and breeding these Pokemon, I'm not making any mistakes. I like to do all this preparation to begin with because it really sucks to have missed something and made a mistake and just basically wasted a bunch of time. So this is just the way that I recommend that you do things. So now that you've done your research, you know what you want to breed, you know the moveset that you want, you know the ability that you want, you know the EV spread that you want, we can now go through the entire process of breeding a competitively viable Pokemon. For the first stage of the breeding process, we want to ensure that we are passing down the nature that we want, and for this, we use an Everstone. One way of obtaining an Everstone is coming to Snowpoint City, go up into the top left to this house, and there will be someone inside who wants to trade your Medicham for their Haunter. This Haunter is carrying an Everstone. You can obtain a Medicham on Route 217, the Victory Road, or the various floors throughout Mount Coronet. Once we have the Everstone, we can give it to a Pokemon which has the nature that we want to pass down to all of our offspring. It's very common to do this with Dittos because as we all know, Ditto will breed with pretty much everything. Let's say for example that we wanted a Jolly Garchomp, we would give our Jolly Ditto the Everstone and place it in the daycare with a Gibble and we will be able to breed Gibbles which have the Jolly nature. Once we have a particularly high IV Jolly Gibble, we can remove the Jolly Ditto from the daycare, take away the Everstone and give it to this Jolly Gibble, and then place that Gibble inside the daycare. Another way to ensure that we get the nature that we want is to use the associated nature mints. These cost 50 battle points and it's probably best to trade for these if you are going to use them. However, I prefer using the Everstone method. Some Pokemon have hidden abilities, which are actually really good. Don't assume that all hidden abilities are your best option. To obtain hidden ability Pokemon, you need to use the Poke Radar and find the larger grass patches. These will have a guaranteed hidden ability. Another way to get hidden abilities for Pokemon which you can't find with the Poke Radar is to use an item called an Ability Patch. You can buy it for 200 BP. It's very expensive, so this is definitely an item that you want to trade for. Of course, another method is to just trade other people for their hidden ability breedables, which they have to spare. If in doubt, you can always ask over on Discord as people are breeding day to day. When you place a Pokemon with a hidden ability inside the daycare, there is a chance that it will pass down the hidden ability. However, it can still roll the normal abilities. So this is just another thing that you need to hatch eggs to obtain along your journey if you are looking for a hidden ability on your Pokemon. Each Pokemon has a list of moves that it can only obtain through breeding with other Pokemon in the same egg group. We refer to these as egg moves. For example, Phoebus can only learn Miracoat from breeding with a Corsola. If we take a look at Corsola, we will find out that it learns Miracoat at level 55. So to pass on Miracoat from the Corsola to the Phoebus, we need to catch or hatch a male Corsola, get it to level 55, teach it Miracoat, and then place it in the daycare with a female Phoebus. 
all of the Feebas offspring will then know Miracoat. Once you have passed down the egg move, you can then swap out the Corsola to continue breeding for higher IVs. If you're confused about this process, please just ask me in the comments as I will answer as many as I can. I will also make separate videos on how to breed specific Pokemon as some of them have much more technical requirements for passing down their egg moves. If you do have any requests, just leave them in a comment. My personal process is to breed up the Pokemon that I want to use all the way to 5 IVs before I transfer the egg moves. This means that once I place the Corsola from the example that I gave, we can roll for the IVs that we need, the desired ability, and we will retain the nature thanks to the Everstone all in one go and give the other Pokemon the Destiny Knot so that we can do the IV rolling. This process means that we can have lots of spare 4 to 5 to 6 IV Pokemon with egg moves that we can trade with other players for more useful Pokemon and repeat this process of creating battle ready Pokemon. After hatching the egg which meets our desired requirements, it's time to EV train. I have a separate video on this so you should use that as a point of reference to know where to go to quickly EV train each of your stats. For a Pokemon to be officially competitive viable, it needs to be at least level 50. All Pokemon above level 50 will be scaled down to level 50 during battles. All Pokemon below level 50 will not be scaled up to level 50. I will be working on a video for fast XP in this game, but I'm still doing a lot of testing and working on these breeding videos first as I believe that they're just a little bit more important. To finish preparing our Pokemon for battle, we need to finalize its moveset and we also need to satisfy any evolution conditions. As you may know, there are lots of ways of evolving a Pokemon. Some of these are just through leveling up, some of them are through trading or by giving them specific items and then trading them. There is a small list of Pokemon which will only evolve through the friendship mechanic. A newly obtained Pokemon will start with a friendship value of 100 and to evolve it, it needs to have its friendship value increased to 220. One way to do this is to simply continue with your EV training and continue gaining XP while the Pokemon is in your party. This will gradually increase the friendship stat each time XP is gained. The fastest way to friendship evolve is by EV training with vitamins. This will require 26 vitamins in two different stats, as vitamins will give 10 EVs in their associated stats. So for example, a protein will give 10 attack EVs, and a Carbos will give 10 speed EVs. Of course, this method is fairly expensive, but it will save you a lot of time. After doing this, the Pokemon will evolve after it levels up if the evolution requirements have been met. As an example, Riolu will only evolve into a Lucario during the daytime. Next, we will talk about finalizing your Pokemon's moveset. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that it's very important that you take note of how your Pokemon is going to learn each of its moves, for your chosen moveset. There are a few different methods to obtaining the moves that you want. Some Pokemon will still learn new moves above level 50, such as Lucario who learns close combat all the way at level 60. We also want to teach our TM only moves when possible, however some evolution stages will not learn the TM. An example of this is Gibble and Gabite not learning Sword Stance, but you can teach Sword Stance to Garchomp. Some moves will have a dash next to them over on the Cerebi website, for example Togekiss can use Aura Sphere, but this little dash, it means that the Pokemon can relearn this move from the move reminder. This will of course cost you one heart scale. Togekiss is also an example of a Pokemon who learns a new move upon evolving. Specifically in this case, it will learn Air Slash. At this point, you should now have a level 50 plus EV trained Pokemon with the desired IVs, ability, and nature. Not only should you feel very proud of yourself, you should also show me these accomplishments either on Twitter or Discord. If you have any leftover Pokemon from your breeding sessions, they can also be used in trades. Again, you can check out Discord, we do have a very nice community for all of this. And that is the complete process that I used to breed battle ready Pokemon. Thanks everyone for watching, don't forget to leave a like if this helped you out, leave a comment if you have any requests for the next breeding videos as they will be coming up next. Have yourself a wonderful day and maybe I will see you soon.